Coming up next, the trial of an accused serial killer one step closer to conclusion. I'm Jim Weider. Stay with us for a live report from Monterey. I'm Jennifer Whitney. And I'm Patrick Emery. Also ahead on KOVR 13 News at 6, dozens of supporters turned out for Ellie Nessler's first day in court. Plus, children are getting their own emergency room at the UC Davis Med Center. And in Raising California, keeping your kids out of the hospital with some quick safety tips for the playground. The News at 6 is next. And now, KOVR 13 News, coverage you count on. With Patrick Emery, Jennifer Whitney, meteorologist Tom Lockman, and sports with Andy Lascano. This is KOVR 13 News at 6. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Our 13 top story, Dorothea Puente. Is she the most notorious female serial killer in Sacramento history? Well, her attorneys, of course, say no, but that question is up to a jury to decide. And after nearly five years since Puente's arrest, the case could go to the jury tomorrow. Now, Puente's on trial for killing nine of her boarding house tenants. Our Jim Weider begins our 13 Top Story team coverage via Newsat 13 for Monterey, where that trial was moved. Jim. Good evening, Jennifer. A shyster, yes. A woman evil and cunning enough to steal the last few pennies from your grandparents? Yes. A serial killer? No. That was the theme of today's defense presentation and their closing statement to the Monterey jury today. Mrs. Puente's attorneys hammered on several key points this afternoon, including number one, the prosecution in their estimation hasn't presented any witnesses. They don't have a murder weapon or an exact cause of death. And finally, the third point, that their four-month presentation is based primarily, according to the defense, on circumstantial evidence. Here's defense attorney Kevin Kleinbo. I vigorously <coughs> have spent way beyond the time I should have attempting to convince you of an alternative, reasonable view of this evidence that points to Dorothea Montalvo Puentes being not guilty. It appears that both sides now are willing to move at a cautious, even slow pace. And that's not surprising, considering the fact that Mrs. Puente was first arrested and indicted way back in 1988. Top Story team coverage continues now with Noel Cisneros. On a rainy autumn five years ago, police started unearthing the first of seven bodies from Puente's yard. Locals called it Nightmare on F Street, and it became quite an attraction for curiosity seekers. The accused, Dorothea Puente, was well known to local social workers as a woman willing to take in society's down and outers, alcoholics, the elderly indigent, and the mentally ill. A social worker's concern over the disappearance of one of Puente's boarders, a mentally ill man named Bert Montoya, led police to start looking for bodies. On November 11th, 1988, they started digging. On November 12th, Puente skipped town. She was captured at a bar in Los Angeles after someone recognized her from television coverage. Though she is the picture of a harmless little old lady, in fact, Puente has a long rap sheet. Her first conviction dates back to 1948 for check forgery. She's been convicted since of more forgery and grand theft and living in a house of prostitution. In 1982, she slipped knockout drops to a man she met in a bar, then robbed him. She was on parole for the knockout robbery when arrested for the F Street murders. At times, Puente has claimed to be a surgeon, a lawyer, an heiress, a movie actress, and the estranged wife of a Mexican land tycoon. The prosecution contends the seven people buried in Puente's yard died from overdoses of tranquilizers and painkillers. The problem for the prosecution is that the bodies had been dead for so long, pathologists couldn't say with certainty if it really was drug overdoses that killed them. Six weeks after police found the bodies in Puente's yard, the body of her former fiancé, Everson Gilmuth, was found boxed and dumped in the Sacramento River. Puente's been in custody since her 1988 arrest. She hates television cameras and is said to be embarrassed about how her personal appearance has declined during her five-year incarceration. She admits to stealing the Social Security checks of the dead, but denies killing anyone. Noel Cisneros, KOVR 13 News. And if all goes as planned, this case should go to the jury sometime tomorrow. But Jennifer and Patrick, we use the word if because it was supposed to go to the jury today and it did not. Mm -hmm. There had been a chance it was going to go yesterday as well. So uh, what about the jury, Jim? I know it's difficult to tell, but can you read anything about their mood? Surprisingly, despite the topic, the jury has been friendly to each other. They're smiling. They're even planning a reunion after all of this is over. 
We'll have to see if they still have a reunion after several days of deliberation. The co-defense counsel Peter Vlotten told the judge today he expects the jury to meet at least three days before coming up with some type mm. of verdict. All right, Jim Weider. And another murder trial draws national attention, this one in Sonora. Ellie Nessler, the woman accused of murdering her son's alleged molester, goes to on trial today in the community where the shooting took place. Nessler seemed very confident on the first day of jury selection. About 120 potential jurors have been asked to fill out questionnaires. Two key questions. What do they think of gun control and the criminal justice system? Supporters are demanding changes in the law, specifically tougher sentences for child molesters. And Nestler's family hopes the system will also stand trial. I know this opened a lot of people's eyes to the danger molesters pose to society. So, yeah, I think that we learn from history and hopefully, um, you know, they won't fail or twice. Testimony is expected to get underway next week. And Ellie Nestler's 11 year old son is on the list of witnesses who will take the stand. Now, prosecutors in the Eric Houston murder trial today hammered away at the credibility of the defense's first two witnesses, a psychiatrist and one of Houston's friends. Mark Saxonmeyer has just returned from the Napa courthouse, and he's joining us in the newsroom this evening. Mark? Patrick, the defense is trying to show there were traumatic events in Eric Houston's life that led him to Lyndhurst High School on May 1st, 1992 including an alleged molestation of Houston by one of the four people he's accused of killing, teacher Robert Brenz. Dr. Jess Grossbeck testified yesterday that Houston had said during psychiatric evaluations that Brenz had molested him on at least two occasions in Brenz's classroom. Today, though, on cross-examination, Grossbeck admitted that Houston could have been lying. The question is, is it possible that Mr. Houston fabricated the allegations of molestation against Mr. Grimms to justify his actions. That's certainly a possible uh, motivation, yes. But I don't, I doubt it. Ricardo Borum said he befriended Houston four years ago and that Houston told him on several occasions that he had been molested by a teacher. He had um, informed me that, you know, he's having problems with one of his grades in school. And in order to graduate, he had to, and um, have sexual, you know, he had to do a sexual favor for the teacher in order to graduate. Now, on cross-examination, the prosecution tried to get Borum to remember what he originally told a television reporter about this alleged molestation one day after the Lindhurst shootings. He did that television interview with KOVR, and tonight at 11, we'll show you what he said back then. We'll show you if indeed there are some inconsistencies in Borum's story. That's tonight at 11. Jennifer, back to you, and Patrick, too. All right. Mark Saxon, my will. We'll look forward to that report. Environmentalists have teamed up with Native Americans to do battle in San Joaquin County. They're fighting a proposed housing and golf development. And today the battle drew a packed house at the Board of Supervisors. Our Craig Prosser was there. He joins us now from our San Joaquin Valley newsroom with details of the debate. Pretty heated, huh, Craig? It was, Jennifer, indeed. The critics say the developers would cut fairways of indifference out of endangered species land so that a favored few can chase golf balls over sacred burial grounds. But the builder himself says his plan would protect the land rather than violate it. It's a forthright uh, effort by a, a group of people in this community to save something which agriculture would destroy. Tom Zuckerman hopes to live in one of the 26 homes Dave Fisher wants to build at Bravelli Woods or what the developer plans to call Buckeye Ranch. Amid meadows, lakes, and woods, it's an exclusive golf and residential community along the McCullany River that has drawn strong opposition from environmental and Native American interests. Perhaps nowhere else in California can one find the unique combination of near pristine valley riparian woodlands, permanent and seasonal wetlands, and important archeological sites in one location. Bill Jennings, who fights to save the McCullany River, is teamed up with Joan Villa, of the I own band of Preserve Miwok Indians on this one. It is the only Plains Miwok village that's perfectly intact. So therefore, 
This is a destruction of our history. An overflow crowd packed the supervisor's chambers as the board considered approving the environmental impact report on the project and removing the tract from the Williamson Act, which protects agricultural land from development. But the builder says his plan goes farther in protecting the land. Since 1920, people, including the University of California, have paid to dig up the Native American artifacts on Buckeye Ranch. We put a stop to this when we bought the property in 1988. Since our purchase, not one person has excavated or destroyed one site. We are also the and Fisher says he's proposed numerous steps to preserve wildlife habitat and protect the historic sites on the property, but critics say that just doesn't go far enough. But just a few minutes ago, the supervisors bought the developer's argument instead, voting four to one to certify the environmental impact statement and to cancel the Williamson Act as it, uh, as it provides to the property, that means it goes on to the Planning Commission, it gets the green light for further study. Jennifer, back oh, to you. Oh, so it will be studied further, not necessarily no, well, that's, developed. That's a, this, today was the most significant step, so this looks like it's on the road to approval. Mm -hmm. However, you can expect that the environmentalists, the ones who lost today, and the Native Americans aren't ready to back down yet. Hmm, right, yeah, a lot of public outcry there. All right, Craig, thanks. Seriously hurt kids in our area will now get some special attention. Head on KOBR 13 News, we will show you how UC Davis' new emergency room with special child size equipment. Plus, in Raising California, how to keep a trip to the playground from ending with a visit to the hospital. Tips on playground safety. Stay with us. problems? Call Clark. Now's the best time to order cable TV because of what you save. It's what you see. Installation is now just $9.95. It's what you see. Uh, it's what you see. Like world events as they happen on CNN. Eric Clapton unplugged on MTV. Championship excitement on USA and ESPN. It's what you say. The fact is, $9.95 is a great it's what you see, like the star-studded excitement of the premium channel, HBO. Showtime. Cinemax. The movie channel. So don't wait. Pick up your phone and call. Hey! Last chance to call 1-800-765-2225 and get installation for only $9.95 when you subscribe to cable TV and any premium value package. Call today. And remember, it's what you say. <laughs> it's what you say. Cable TV and say. the premium what channels. Call now and see what you saved. Now, 93 Z28 Camaros from 18 dollars 93 Metro Convertibles from $79.99. During the giant Camaro Metro Marathon. John L. Sullivan, brand new Camaros. Choose from Northern California's best selection. Brand new Metro Convertible Sullivan price from $79.99. More Sullivan savings. Special 6.9% APR used vehicle financing. Now at John L. Sullivan in the Roseville Auto Mall. So big. You're going to see it to believe it. More children under 14 die in accidents than from anything else. Well, despite this, a new report from the Institute of Medicine says our emergency care literally doesn't fit our kids' needs. Unikwan says UC Davis Medical Center is leading the way, though, in changing that. It's every parent's nightmare. Your child is sick or badly hurt, and you rush to the emergency room. Are five millimeters. Squeeze my hand if you hear me. But the Institute of Medicine says most emergency rooms and ambulances are poorly prepared to care for our kids. The equipment can be too large and powerful, and some technicians aren't trained to recognize the difference between children and adults. The new pediatric emergency clinic at UC Davis Medical Center is tailor-made for children's needs. Carol Parra helped design the clinic. It's a very intimidating process. They come in here because they've had an injury or an accident or, or an illness. They're scared anyway. So if we can find some way to make them feel at ease and not make it feel too babyish in here, then, it's, then I've done my job. For example, this emergency room has stainless steel mirrors instead of glass, so it's safer. And the equipment is kid-sized. 
this is a, a brand new newborn baby's cuff, and this is an infant's cuff. And they then again go up to an adult size cuff. We have different cuffs for different age children because it can make a very big difference on the blood pressure that you actually get. The kids like having their own emergency clinic. Because it's not like anyone, any other hospital. How is it different? Well, they don't have a toy place where you get to play with toys. I think we've done a very good job in the past. We'll continue to do it in the future, but this will benefit the children because of the improved surroundings. And doctors these days recognize that making patients feel better about their treatment can help or even speed up the physical healing. At UC Davis Medical Center, Unicorn, KOVR 13 News. And the pediatric emergency clinic will be open to its first patients this Thursday. And one way to keep your kids out of hospital emergency rooms is to teach them about playground safety. It's the perfect weather because kids are swarming to the playgrounds now. But there are some hazards you may not be aware of. In tonight's Raising California, we learn some playground rules. Playgrounds are happy places for kids during the summer. They can run, jump, and swing to their heart's content. But before you turn your child loose on a playground, there are a few things you need to know. Before you even send your kid out to a playground, you want to make sure that they're dressed, um, that they're wearing shoes and socks and, and at least shoes, sandals for sure, and shirts. Shoes and socks and shirts are important. It's also important that your kids know why. Like if you go barefooted inside the, um, the sand, well then um, you might get, step on a piece of glass or something. Parents, check out the playground area before your children go out to play. Pick up any broken glass or other objects that could hurt them. And educate your kids about common courtesy. You should be careful when you're hanging on the bars that there's nobody, like, behind you or by you. You can kick them. A little awareness can go a long way in preventing injuries. Infants and toddlers belong in kiddie swings. They can move into the big swings at about the age of four. And slides, they're loads of fun but there are things you need to watch out for. Slides will become hot, so it's always a good idea for parents to even teach their kids this, to touch the slide to make sure that it's not hot, and if it's hot to your touch, don't use the slide. Don't climb up backwards either. Standing at the foot of the slide is also dangerous. Sand is irritating in the eyes, so kids don't throw or kick it. Sounds like a lot of don'ts, but this advice could make your playground a safer place to have fun. And again, good common courtesy and common sense are powerful tools to avoid injury while out on a playground. No sand kicking. None at mm -mm. all. Well, you know, it looks like it's going to be absolutely perfect playground weather for a while. Tom Laughman's coming up next with your forecast and look at how much more rain they're expecting in the Midwest. Give your summer a little heat and a lot of splash with the Wild Summer Sweepstakes. Just visit your participating Taco Bell restaurant, home of the hot new Wild Tacos. Fill out your entry and send it to KOVR 13. Then watch KOVR 13 News at 6. If your name is shown, call within 30 minutes to win a key that just might start a special splash edition Ford Ranger truck from Folsom Lake Ford, part of Ford's number one summer. Enter, watch, and win with the Wild Summer Sweepstakes from KOVR 13, Folsom Lake Ford, and Taco Bell. Closed captioning is sponsored by Sleep Train and Serta, your ticket to a better night's sleep. And 98 Cent Clearance Centers, name brands for only 98 cents. Hi folks, I'm Chuck Swift. The only seven Dodge dealers in the whole state of California receive Chrysler Corporation's Award for Excellence for 1992. Now one of the requirements is outstanding service. That means outstanding people. And at our Swift dealerships, we do have truly dedicated people who sincerely want you to be completely satisfied with the way we care for you and your car. And if you're a bargain hunter, then this brand new 93 Colt at only $69.93 is the car for you. And of course, only at our Swift dealerships. Airport, please. I've got a 9 a.m. flight. No problem. Good. What airline? Alaska. Alaska. First time Alaska? Yes, it is. It's an airline. Yeah. Alaska. When Alaska Airlines says a flight will leave at 9 a.m., we do our best to make sure it does. I I never leave on time. So usually the only time you'll have to wait for a plane is when you miss one. What's the world coming to? KOPR 13 weather is brought to you by Alaska Airlines with three non-stops to Seattle every business day. You know, when we watch commercials and we get a chuckle out of them because we see them all the time, you know they're good commercials. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm.
Now then, mm -hmm. rain in the Midwest, <laughs> we can only hope it stops. Mm, boy, what's the word, Tom? It's not going to stop. You know, I had a taxi ride like that once in Boston. I had to laugh. It was quite a ride. All right, the rain continues in the Midwest. Today alone, over an inch of rain, and these are the orange areas, from Rochester, Minnesota, to Waterloo, down to Columbia, Missouri, and then across to St. Louis, back into parts of Nebraska and Kansas. St. Joe reporting over three inches of rain. Parts of northern Missouri over three inches of rain today. And the rain continues. Heavier rain coming in from the west. We might get up to five inches of rain in parts of Kansas this evening, and all of that continuing to spread eastward. It is not over yet. In the meantime, our weather not over yet. Certainly a beautiful week headed our way. 90 tomorrow in Sacramento to 93 in Modesto. Temperatures will drop even further into Thursday. By Friday and Saturday, they may come up a little bit, but we're looking for upper 80s. Hard to believe it could be so nice here, but it's cooling off in the west and cooling off in the east, and the heat and the rain continue in the Midwest. 80s in the foothills, some areas may touch 90. Lows in the 50s and 60s with lots of sunshine. Great weather in the Bay Area, certainly no heat wave there. Fog along the coast, 72 in San Francisco, 60s along the coast, low 60s up near Fort Bragg, 88 in Santa Rosa, and 80s in the West Delta with a nice breeze in the afternoon. If you're headed for the mountains, what a great day coming up. 80 in Reno, 70s at the lake, lows in the 20s and 30s, 77 in Pollock Pines, hard to, uh, to beat that Sierra weather. Here's the satellite situation with lows continuing to drop into the Pacific Northwest, raining over parts of Washington, raining over over parts of Idaho and Montana. Highs in western Montana never got out of the 50s today, and the cool air continuing to drive southward in toward California. That will keep our temperatures down. Here it is on the Superview. Look at all the cloudiness in the Pacific Northwest. The year without a summer for them, and they are complaining about that. Let's take a look at the national scene. We said that heavier rain was headed for the Midwest. Here it is. Notice the cells developing in western uh, Nebraska into parts of western uh, 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 Colorado and then headed eastward. Western Texas getting the cells. A lot of this moisture started as uh, the circulation around Calvin. Of course, Calvin no longer uh, in the picture, but the moisture has to go somewhere, so it is moving gradually into the Midwest. A bad situation for them. Observer Team 13, 82 in Forest Meadows, 91 in Empire in Paradise, 98 in Oroville and Apple Hill, 87 degrees today. Back online with us. Marysville, Yuba City now at 94. 86 in Sacramento, a pretty good breeze. 89 in Stockton and Modesto, 92 degrees. Humidity has been comfortable all day with a dew point of 52. Relative humidity, 31%. The sea breeze is in, southwest at 15, and the barometer, 2981. Taking a look ahead six days, sunshine, even cooler temperatures. Thursday and Friday, highs in the upper 80s at Executive Airport, mid-50s to upper 50s at night. The weather really is good. And uh, tonight we'll be updating the rain totals for the Midwest. It goes mm. on and on. It looks like it'll be raining off and on all week for them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All right, Tom. Still ahead on KOVR 13 News, Andy Lascano with sports and this week's softball spotlight. Mm, this week it turns that spotlight on some folks right here at KOVR who are taking home the competition on the softball diamond. Best of KOBR 13 Values Coupon Magazine, coming to your mailbox soon with fantastic discounts from your favorite stores and restaurants. And look inside for your chance to win a seven-day trip of a lifetime to Australia, the land down under, from KOBR 13 and Carlson Travel. Also, there's a new way to get to Hawaii. With Hawaii miles, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. The Best of KOBR 13 Values, coming to your mailbox soon. Welcome to the Wild Summer Sweepstakes. If you see your name and driver's license number, call 1-800-994-KOVR. You have 30 minutes to claim a key that might start a new Ford Ranger pickup. Watch again tomorrow for another chance to win. If you've got a bad hairdo, who's going to come talk to you? When I go get my hair cut, I usually ask to leave it, leave it a little bit long on top and clean it up around the bottom and the edges. Make like a, a moat kind of curves around the back of my head and keeps me clean and tight. Yeah, that looks sharp. That looks sharp. I'm ready to go. 
Supercuts. How do you want your hair cut? Sure, the Chevy Full Size is the leader in Northern California, but now there's another reason to drive the best. Chevy's the price leader, too. Follow, follow, leader. Just 12 30 for the California Edition pickup with all this. Follow, follow, leader. The Full Size Truck Leader. Specially equipped for California. Just 12 30 That's Chevy. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. See your local Chevrolet Geo dealer today. Follow, follow, leader. Chevy. Well, well, now. Unfortunately, we're starting out on a, a, rather, a tragedy and yeah, a sad, sad note. Here's a family now, this mm -hmm. Allison family, the uh -huh. racing family. They've lost two sons in a year. Oh. Imagine that, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and, and today we, we deal with life, the harsh realities of life. We're talking about NASCAR driver Davy Allison, who died this morning from the massive injuries he sustained in this helicopter crash yesterday. NASCAR driver Red Farmer, who was in the chopper with Allison when it crashed, remains hospitalized. Federal investigators have found no evidence of mechanical failure in the helicopter. Less than a year ago, Allison's younger brother Clifford killed in a racing accident. Davy Allison, only 32 years old. All right, I know and you know that you could be watching the baseball all-star game on another channel right now. But deep down, you're telling yourself, I want more. I want something. I want a game that means something. You want the softball spotlight. We have all-stars. Their names like Mock, Lowry, Lopez, and they're battling for something, for first place in the Sacramento Media League. It's time for the long-awaited rematch. It's us. Amy, second base. Gavin, shortstop. Tanya, first base. Dave, third base. Brittany, short center. Kevin, left field. Sylvia, right field. Mike Centerfield, Patty catching, Albert pitching. Let's go. And them. Yeah, them. We won the first time. And it looks like we're going to make it a sweep. Albert Mock single in the top of the first, drives home two more. KOVR leads six, nothing. The guys who are on defense now, the guys who are in the field, that's channel 13. Okay, and the guys who are batting, that's channel three. Which is your favorite? Whoever wins. Ah! Channel 3 wants this one bad, too. They get three on this hit by Vince Nacito. Hey, we got us a good one at O'Neill Park, tied at six. Oh, hey, look, it's one of our photographers, Mike Lowry, and his daughter, Megan. Well, Megan's obviously inherited mom's good looks. Back to the action. We lead 11-6, last inning. But Channel 3's Richard Die hits one to right, and we turn it into an adventure. Three runs score. Now it's 11-9. And before you know it, they've got the bases loaded, two outs, but two strikes on the batter. So here's Albert Mock's payoff pitch. Hey! Yeah! So, uh, looks like there's a new sheriff in town, and his initials, K-O-V-R. We win 11-9 and complete a sweep of our friends at KCRA. All right, and so at last check, uh, we were still in first place in the Sacramento Media League. Hey, you want to get your team on uh, the softball spotlight? Give us a call here at 374-1335. Hey, there you go, huh? And there's the address if you want to take the time to write a letter. KOVR 13 Sports and the rest of the information on your screen. Of course, if you write us, you're going to have to play our team. So, Hey, uh, the Sharks traded goalie Jeff Hackett to the Chicago Blackhawks today for a conditional draft choice. Hackett only won two games between the pipes for the Shark last season. Of course, they lost 71 games, so kind of hard to be the winning goalie for the uh, San Jose Sharks last year. So there you go. So you're not on the team. I'm well, you know, surprised. it's kind of hard for me to get out there and play, having to work with you guys and work at night. And we take a lot out of you, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Certain, of, certain. What does he uh, mean by you having to work with us? Well, probably exactly because what I'm he trying said. Trying to reach your <laughs> level. That's what it is. It's, yeah, it's hard to sink that low. <laughs> that's it for this report, our six o'clock edition. Hard copy next. Thanks for joining us. See you back here tonight at eleven. All right.